Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a concept known as Astroseismology, which can also be called the music of the stars. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. When it comes to trying to analyze stars and specifically their properties such as mass, size and even things on the inside of those stars, it's not as easy as just looking at them and trying to guess. As a matter of fact, let's just say we were to look at the star right there in the middle, also known as Polaris. This is the famous northern star, often used in navigation because it more or less points directly at the north. As you can see here, it's relatively small, as a matter of fact it's very very tiny so it's kind of difficult for us to tell the mass, the size or even the distance to this star. So then how did we discover the masses, the sizes and various compositions of stars out there? And even though there is no one answer to this question because there are different techniques we use, one of the more recent techniques that has been actively developed in the last few years is known as Astroseismology, which of course directly relates to the seismology or the study of earthquakes and earthquake wave propagation here on the planet Earth. Because one of the ways that we were able to study what's inside our own planet is by studying the propagation of waves as they happen after a typical earthquake. And by studying the propagation of seismic waves inside our planet, and also by realizing how we can apply this outside of our planet, the scientists then came up with another study known as helioseismology, which refers to the study of the wave propagation and the vibrations inside our sun. Now, this is what our sun looks like to us, but if we were to look on the inside, we would discover pretty quickly that our sun is filled with a lot of activity and a lot of different waves that are being propagated and create a kind of a harmonic or technically a standing wave that we can then detect and by studying these waves we can then also discover what is happening inside of our sun and also what our sun is made out of. All of this kind of relates to the high school concept of the standing wave where essentially the interaction between various standing waves produce these harmonic vibrations which is also of course how musical instruments work as well. Using harmonics we get different types of melodies and different sounds. So in that sense a typical instrument directly relates to what happens inside our sun and inside other stars. So in that sense all of the stars out there are technically playing music and each of the stars out there produces a unique melody that we can hear, analyze and use this melody to predict what's inside of these stars. And some of the first star melodies were actually heard by the Kepler telescope along with the Cora telescope that you see right here, but both of these missions are now over. However, we now have the famous TESS telescope doing a much better job and producing much better results already. The paper I recently discussed used the data from TESS telescope and asteroid seismology of a star we knew about to actually recalculate certain features that we um, unfortunately got wrong initially. And in a sense, this shows you how important this field of astroseismology is. And even though it's still a growing field and we're still learning new techniques as we go, because of the new telescopes, we're able to analyze stars a lot better and can use astroseismology to very thoroughly analyze what's happening on the inside. Now, unlike our sun, where we can actually see things pretty clearly, with distant stars it's a little bit more difficult. We're not really able to see as much detail, so only some of the more rudimentary harmonics can be detected. In other words, we don't hear all of the sounds, we only hear some of the sounds, but even those are enough to determine what's happening on the inside, and also, by combining results from various other stars, we can then create a kind of a database, which can then be used to predict properties of various stars, based on the music we hear from them. For example, in the last year's paper, the scientists have already started to compile this database to essentially create what I guess you would call the music database of stars. And so by analyzing the harmonics and the so-called melody of these distant stars, we'll eventually be able to very thoroughly predict what's happening in them and what they are to begin with. Now it will probably take us a lot of observations to create this database, but with time we'll be able to hear the star and know exactly what's happening on the inside. But I do need to clarify something, we're not really listening to these stars, we're still just looking at them. But by looking at them what we're actually seeing is a slight deviation in brightness 
that actually does happen quite regularly. And by studying these deviations in brightness that do happen quite regularly, we can then see how the star changes with time and predict its harmonics and its music. So in this case, when I say music, I really just mean this. I mean the actual harmonics that are created by the waves that move inside of the star. And for our sun, for example, it takes around 5 minutes for the wave to travel through the entirety of the sun and create a certain pattern that we detect. However, in some of the more giant stars, like for example the famous Betelgeuse, due to the sheer size of the star and also the low density of the star itself, the wave propagation happens much, much slower. It could take weeks or even months for a single wave to move across the star, and thus the frequencies here are usually much lower. And because of this, the actual music or the actual harmonics will always be different, and with a smaller star, the frequency increases even more. So basically, in a sense, it's kind of like a large star will create a very low, very bassy kind of a sound, almost like a tuba. On the other hand, our sun might create something in between, and a much smaller star might create something even more high-pitched, where the waves could propagate within only a few seconds. So, in that sense, if you were to listen to all of this music across the galaxy, you would hear quite a variety of different melodies. And even though on our planet Earth all of this is a result of earthquakes, in a typical star these waves happen all the time. And they are created by the actual convection on the inside, which is driven by these really really large bubbles that form as a result of nuclear reaction. And all of this together creates this really complex interaction inside of the stars that eventually result in these harmonics that we see on the outside. And as our telescopes get more advanced and their cameras get better, we'll be able to detect even more things coming from these various stars and thus be able to analyze them even more. And when it comes to the actual science of astroseismology, this field has been growing really fast. The vast majority of papers is actually from the last couple of years, and it's very likely that, because of the ability of tests to see so much more of the actual star, a lot more scientists in the future will be studying stars using astroseismology, so it's going to be a field we'll talk about many times in the future. But for now, that's really it. Once we learn something more about stars using astroseismology, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video, so make sure to subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.